Mr. Mayor. Uh, I am, of course, a local lad myself. I come from just across Valley of Clifton, and so I've known this part of the world for, my, for as long as I can remember. I've also, of course, been a member of the Salford Astronomical Society since, I think, 1965, virtually since its founding, and my interest in Crabtree and his friend Horrocks in Liverpool, but I can't remember not knowing about it. I remember looking up material, first of all, in Smith Library, and then in Salford Library at Field Park, then, of course, working up material in Cheatham's Library, where there are put original manuscripts and documents, and I've been working seriously on Crabtree and his circle since about the mid-70s, something like that. But let me, before unveiling this, say why he was important. As, of course, Mr. Mayor says, he was a first. But the first of what? He was not just the first man to look through a telescope round the well, probably was round here. <laughs> let me put it in context. If you think of Europe and Britain in, let's say, 1630, there was a gradual movement of evidence to the fact that the Earth was rotating around the Sun. This was being acknowledged by all people across Europe, and of course, it's also being acknowledged by the Church as well. In spite of all the nonsense that you hear about the misinterpretation of Galileo, the Church itself and many, many churches were what were called Copernicans. They argued that the Earth moved around the Sun on solid evidence. Now you have people like Nicholas Copernicus himself in Europe, Tycho Brahe in Denmark, Galileo in Italy, Kepler, who was himself a devout Lutheran minister in Hungary. Then, of course, you had people like Piaga Sindhi in France, all moving towards this idea of a Copernican universe. But all of this is happening on the other side of the channel. And they're writing books, all in the Latin language. And Crabtree is the first Englishman, certainly the first person in this area, to take a serious interest in this. Now, we knew he was a cloth merchant, and probably from all the Crabtree names around here, I reckon his family owned a good bit of land around here, Crabtree Field, Crabtree this, Crabtree Cottage, and so on. He wasn't poor. They also married Elizabeth Pendleton of Pendleton, which again suggests, you know, not badly enough, not rich, but belonging to what you might call the rural middle class of Stuart England. Business, land cultivation, intellectual interests. We knew he was given a first-class education of what was called the Manchester School, which in those days, born in 1610, would probably have been a school attached to the, to the collegiate church. The church, of course, which in the 19th century became Manchester Cathedral and the was with Canon Albert Radcliffe is himself a priest. And that would have run an academic body. When he would have been there, Crabtree, and it wouldn't have been a long walk after all, just down the fields from here, he would have learned the main thing, Latin. The Latin language, how to read it, write it, and understand it. He would have taught very little astronomy. But the key thing is, if you could read Latin, you had access to the treasury of world scientific knowledge.
there, we'll let you blow it out. But only when <laughs> right. I say. Right. Okay. Yeah. When you get the signal. Yeah. You, you're good at following signals. That's after Robin's blown it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them that doesn't go out though. <laughs> right, okay, okay. It's nice to see everybody here, obviously, on this 30th anniversary of Salford Observatory. Um, maybe not quite the turnout we had at the 25th, but there again, you know, obviously, it was a different situation, wasn't it? Astronomical, we were, you know, hail pop and all the other things uh, going on. And it's raining. Um, and it was raining, as <laughs> rightly pointed out. However, today we've had a brilliant day, so obviously that's gone down very well. Um, obviously, we've got to. Uh, congratulate Howard here on this oh, amazing yeah. 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 Absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Um, and I think of the members, and we, wife. And wife, okay, right. I hope the members who actually should be here and who aren't, right, oh. then they will obviously have missed out on this. Oh, especially one right. member. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially one member. Like the chairman. <laughs> Did oh you yes, what was that cow? Like the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> What's he called? Yeah. No, no, no. The chairman. That's right. So anyway, obviously, we Salford Observatory is still here, still functioning. Um, I wouldn't say maybe we're going from strength to strength, but we're certainly keeping an even keel. Um, and obviously, um, it's getting old like the rest of us. So we'll just have to see how it goes. What we want, what we want, is a few more younger members. In yeah, we place. do. You are willing to do things! Right? <laughs> um, so, with that anyway, obviously, we'd just like to uh, say Happy Birthday Salford Observatory. Yeah. Yeah. Happy, Happy Birthday! Happy Birthday! Now, what I'd, like to do, what I'd like to do is ask our past chairman and past director of observatory, Robin, just to say a few words, seeing as it's come up for the day, oh, and he ought to. Yay! Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much again. I think all I, all I can say is that I'm very, very happy to be here yeah. and to see um, the um, society obviously in a thriving condition. Um, we all know, as you said, they have, all societies have their ups and downs, but um, let's hope uh, you know, SAS just keeps going and going. 30 years up, let's look to the next 30. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right, Robbie. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then, <coughs> thing, and that is the fact that. There's been lots of other people who've helped out on today as well. Obviously, Kath's done quite a lot of arranging. Edna and Walter have been involved, right? Um, and without all these people doing these bits, you know, obviously, the day would be that much more difficult, wouldn't it? Um, so, you know, there's a good half a dozen people who have uh, done their little bit. So, once again, they all deserve yeah. that. Yeah. So, I think... Can I, can I, just before you do that, um, no, no, no. <laughs> on behalf of Alan who's not here, and uh, there's many other people who um, aren't here today, it's a pity that, but as well as the negative things, I think there's quite a lot of astronomy still being done today. The, uh, there are meetings that we have, I think some of you know, occasionally at Ken's place, and I know that Tony um, and a few, John Hovesy in particular, have been doing and still are doing quite a lot of active astronomy. So it's just a matter of getting dark, clear skies which aren't that cold. <laughs> you want to come to Wales? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, so if we. You should see the skies we have. Right, so I think if a week on Thursday if we all turn yeah. up about yeah, 7 no o'clock. No <laughs> so. We're supposed to take the camping trips, but I know Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I did forget one thing. We, you, I think. Uh, you all know from the state of the observatory from the outside that uh, it's not the best uh, uh, of appearance at the moment. But besides that, the, there's a lot of people, particularly Ken, who's been done, doing quite a lot of work in keeping it going. Uh, I don't think all of us know really the well, amount of. Well, <laughs> what yeah. So, can I have a round of applause for all the people who do the work in this? <laughs> down here who's actually going to do the honours for us right and blow out the candle of the Salford Observatory birthday cake. Aren't you going to sing happy birthday first? Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Happy birthday Salford Observatory Happy birthday to you Go! Whoa! <laughs>
happens there? It's at 30pm. Is that lunch, uh, Anthony? What? I like that lunch. Yeah, I'm looking at the shop at the bit of the corn by the village. Right, corn beef? Um, no, it's just no, it's a face with Chris Roll. Chris Roll is slowly unravelling it as he's eating it. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's all there with his white right? uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am of course a local lad myself. I come from just across Valley of Clifton. <laughs> and so I've known this part of the world for my for as long as I can remember. I've also, of course, been a member of the Salford Astronomical Society since, I think, 1965, virtually since its founding, and my interest in Crabtree and his friend Horrocks in Liverpool, well, I can't remember not knowing about it. I remember looking up material, first of all, in Smith Library, and then in Salford Library at Field Park, then, of course, working up material in Cheatham's Library, where there are, of course, original manuscripts and documents, and I've been working seriously on Crabtree and his circle since about the mid-70s, something like that. I bet there wasn't that much. <laughs> I suppose the weeds have grown over this so and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. Michael Yeah. 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 Sunday, 
the 18th of May, 1980. <laughs> and here we see members of the Salford Astronomical Society departing for their day trip to Greenwich. <laughs> Transport was by a hired coach, but due to the FAS convention in Coventry the day before and the early seven o'clock start, mid-morning was showing evidence of the hectic weekend. Once inside the grounds of Greenwich Park, members made their way to the Meridian Line, where they would meet Miss Heather Cooper, who was to act as our guide. The time ball. This was the first public time signal erected in 1833 by John Pond. It falls down its mast every day at one o'clock. Oh, he, he says she'll come in here at the gate. The Royal Greenwich Observatory has been the prime meridian of the world since 1884. That is to say, both time and position is measured from here. Yeah, thank you. And due to a misunderstanding, we realised we were at one hour too early. The Onion Dome, 1894. Plumstead House, 1670. Oh, my God! Oh, no, it's my way. Yeah! Oh, 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 our first visit was to be the planetarium in the South Building. This is the largest of the Greenwich buildings. It used to be called the Physical Observatory and at one time housed a 26-inch refractor and a 30-inch reflector. Both instruments are now at Hurstminstow. Herschel's 40 foot telescope, that's all there is of it because there's only 10 feet of it. It looks like an inverted dustbin. Um, I don't know where the rest of us is, it seems to have decayed rather badly. But um, somebody compared observing with this telescope to shaving with a guillotine because the observer had to stand at the top end, squint down the tube with an eyepiece and keep it in, in sort of, keep it steady. And it was pretty difficult to do that. But the only other thing that happened to it Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello. Absolutely no way you can really go near it. 